Hi guys, can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me. <laughs> um, okay, so this is going to be a talk about the future of Fiddler, and that future is called Fiddler Orchestra. And in order to find out what it is, bear with me till the end of this lecture. Speaking of me, my name is Cviatko Jovchev. Currently, I am the lead developer for Fiddler and Just Product Lines at Progress. Actually, there is such a thing as Fiddler product line. I mean, most of the people know just about Fiddler, but there is also Fiddler Core and Fiddler Cup, which are pretty useful products. You might want to check them out, provided you are interested in Fiddler. And then there is the Just Product line, which is just the compile, just assembly, and just mock. Most of the .NET developers should have at least used these tools once, maybe. <laughs> So, let's move on. I'm assuming that uh, most of you being here know what Fiddler is, but just in case somebody doesn't, let's make this talk useful for them too. Fiddler is a world-famous Windows debugging proxy, allowing you to monitor HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, WebSockets, and pretty much like all the major OSI Level 7 protocols used in used on the web today. Um, naturally, it allows to view, modify, store, playback traffic. Uh, it's really mature product, like tens of thousands of developers use it on a daily basis. And it's a standalone Windows app. So we're going to be talking about the future of Fiddler, but um, there's actually no future without a past. So Let's take a quick look at the past so that we get a sense of direction where we're coming from. So Fiddler was uh, created more than a decade ago. And uh, pretty much there are two major periods in its existence. For quite a lot of time, it was uh, a one-man show. And then it turned itself to company product. So. Moving on, um, the one-man show period. <laughs> so Fiddler was created by Eric Lawrence, more than, like as I said, more than a decade ago, as a side project on his major job at Microsoft. Um, with time, it became the most popular web debugger for Windows. Telerik acquired it in 2012, and uh, back at that time, Eric joined Telerik and. Uh, pretty much turned Fiddler into his main focus. And then Tarek took over in 2015 after Eric left the company. In effect, um, Fiddler was pretty a one-man show for most of its existence. Um, even after Tarek acquired it, uh, it, it kept on being just Eric working on it, because pretty much the main purpose of that acquisition was Terrick wanted to use it uh, in the back end of some of its other products. And uh, really no resources were put at that time into development of Fiddler as such. So it was just Eric working on it and he was doing a pretty good job. The thing got more and more popular. Community was happy and growing. But then everything comes to an end, so at some point uh, Eric left the company, and Trick got on its hand the most popular web debugger out there, but Trick didn't have any plan what to do with it at this point of time. So this is where we, let's say, chime in and uh, start thinking about Fiddler's future, where Fiddler is the main focus. So at this point, we were pretty much standing at the peak. And we're standing at the peak. The question is where to go next. <laughs> pretty much, there are two options. You either find a higher peak to climb, or you start going down. At that point of time, there was like no real competition of Fiddler. I mean, there wasn't another debugging proxy that was better than Fiddler so that we could catch up with them or copy their features or at least get the general sense of direction. 
So we had to actually think of something completely different. Um, I'm going to go a little bit ahead of time here and say we chose the first option because it was like the most exciting one. Going down isn't really exciting. <laughs> so we started thinking how we could actually get Fiddler even more useful. And we played with quite some different ideas. Uh, we considered having Fiddler store debugging data in the cloud so that uh, teams of developers using it can share it. But that turned out to be not that popular with the users. Then we tried porting Fiddler to Mac, which could have been popular with the users if it worked well. Well, we used the Mono framework and it wasn't that stable. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't that stable for WinForms applications. So, in effect, uh, we ended up with not fully functional port. Then we considered rewriting the Fiddler UI using some of the modern frameworks just to make our lives easier and make the lives of our users easier. But, I mean, that was like a major effort and it didn't really give much to the users. We also considered full HTTP2 support, but that's not really climbing up. I mean, it's something we have to do anyways. It's like running in place. As HTTP2 gets more popular, we have to introduce this support anyway, so it's not really getting Fiddler even more useful. So at this point, we came up with uh, those two major points. The only way to make Fiddler more useful, we saw it, this was going truly multi-platform, like supporting all major platforms that are available today, and going distributed. By going distributed, I mean having uh, different instances of Fiddler running on different platforms, talk to each other, take commands from each other, share data with each other. Um, at that point, we realized that uh, the way we came to this conclusion, we realized that uh, the real world complexity kind of outgrew Fiddler's initial design. When Fiddler was created, uh, the world was quite different. Web was simpler, there weren't that many platforms. Not that much stuff was happening. I assume the scenarios were simpler. Now the real world complexity pretty much forced us into thinking in this direction. So, those two things though needed to somehow stick together because like being multi-platform and being distributed still doesn't get all of the job done. So the missing link for us was common UI on all platforms, on all supported platforms. That would provide a really platform agnostic user experience because the user needs to become Fiddler expert only once. It will make our lives easier because new features come to all platforms simultaneously. And of course, yeah, the users get the new features at the same time. There are no second class citizens anymore because like the Mac port of Fiddler we had was really subpar to the Windows Fiddler. So having all these in mind, multi-platform, distributed, and common UI, we decided to, let's say, come up with a new flavor of Fiddler, and we called this Fiddler Orchestra. Pun intended. <laughs> so Fiddler Orchestra is about distributed Fiddler running on all platforms with common UI. The distributed part means any instance of Fiddler could control any other instance of Fiddler like introduce breakpoints, use the composer to emit sessions from that other machine that also runs Fiddler and stuff like this. And of course, it can get all the information the other instance of Fiddler sees. Sessions, statistics, pretty much anything in that same Fiddler UI. And as for the common UI part, we decided to go with uh, web UI. That had, let's say, certain advantages, the biggest, the biggest one of which is uh, Fiddler goes in the browser 
where, let's say, quite a big part of the web, web debugging actually happens. So, in effect, Fiddler Orchestra is going to be a game changer. In browser, Fiddler can see traffic at origin, like in the browser that emits it, at destination if there is another Fiddler running at the, at the web server, at any midpoint that's of interest. It's pretty much like browser developer tools for grown-ups. <laughs> um, that allows us to cover all kinds of complex networking scenarios that uh, we saw Fiddler users encounter. Because quite often traffic gets changed in the way or at the destination. So that pretty much allows you to get like a complete picture of what happens to, to the traffic you are debugging. And of course, other tricks are possible, like you, you can pretty much emit your own response at the web server <laughs> without ever logging there. So let's take a closer look at the uh, Fiddler Orchestra architecture, the way we designed it. There are going to be two roles in Fiddler Orchestra, controller and client. The controller apparently harvests data and uh, can control a number of other Fiddler instances that run wherever. The, the client is just uh, reporting data and accepting commands from any number of controllers. So, like the simplified view of the orchestra architecture looks like this. There's one controller, multiple clients, uh, it's only the controller that opens a port visible to the external world. So the controller could open a well-known port like 80 and then uh, the clients would avoid problems with network security and firewalls and stuff. But then if we go back to the general description of the orchestra architecture, any instance of Fiddler running on any platform can be client, controller, or both. And like, this is the really fun part of it. Being both client and controller, controller creates an architecture like this. So you can have uh, a controller collecting data from a number of clients and reporting to a top level controller, another one. So in effect, one can abstract, uh, let's say, the network architecture and get aggregated report without knowing the details. Also, you can have like a single client controlled by multiple controllers at different times with different priorities, which um, also allows, let's say, pretty complex scenarios. So, having seen this, um, we, can, we can see a short Fiddler Orchestra demo. We are actually quite advanced with this project, so I'm going to try showing here an Android device browsing a Linux web server, and then Fiddler on Windows acting as orchestra controller and seeing the traffic from both the Android device and uh, the Linux web server. So let's see how this pans out. Uh, all the setup is going to be on this Android phone, and uh, I have a virtual machine running Linux on this laptop, and this laptop is going to be running the Windows Fiddler. Uh, the three of those are currently in the same network. So. Here is our Linux web server. Uh, we got a open source. Uh, as oh, it didn't switch. I did switch it. <laughs> Wait a sec. Uh, maybe this is gonna, yeah. This is going to help. Okay, thank you, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, 
we got this open source ASP.NET uh, core web application called Album Viewer. It pretty much is like music collection application. That's how it looks like. It runs uh, on that Ubuntu Linux machine at port 5000. Let's just check out that it actually runs. Okay, it does. So the way we use Fiddler Orchestra is uh, Oops. Currently, um, we have web UI for, for Fiddler Orchestra that just allows setting up uh, a proxy and the connection to the orchestra controller. And that's how one can start it. And now we should have, uh, we should have the orchestra web UI running at port 8800. So let's see. So as you can see, we just have like simple proxy settings here. This is the proxy page, and then uh, we have the orchestra connection set up and the HTTPS settings. So in this case, we want to have Fiddler running as reverse proxy in front of the web server so that all the traffic goes through Fiddler first, and then Fiddler redirects this to the web server. And um, we have a default listen on port, which is 8866. We check allow remote clients to connect. And then we say redirect traffic to port 5000 where our uh, web app is. So then we start it. And now we have, <coughs> we have the actual fiddler just without the UI um, working as a reverse proxy. Listening on port 8866 and redirecting everything to port 5000. So <laughs> now we have to actually connect it to to the controller, which is going to be Fiddler running on this Windows machine. It's good old WinForms Windows Fiddler. I'm going to run it as administrator so that it can open the port easier. Otherwise, we have to run a special command to open the port. So we have added this new Fiddler Orchestra tab to Fiddler. It's pretty simple line. It has the status. It has the port we the controller listens at. It has the key, which is used to encrypt the connection. And then you can simply start. It says waiting for connections. And now we have to just copy the port and key to the setup on the Linux machine. So the port is 3636. Well, of course, we have to provide the IP address, which is, yeah, which is this. These machines are on the same network, so that's how it looks like, and then we connect, and we have device name web server connected. So pretty much any traffic that uh, that gets on on port 8866 here on this machine is going to get displayed in this fiddler now. But we have one more one more thing to add, and it's the mobile device, the Android phone. So. I have this application that allows screen sharing between Android phone and uh, Windows machine. So this is the actual phone screen. It's not an emulator. I'm sharing the screen. So we have uh, a Xamarin app, which pretty much allows the same thing our web client for orchestra does, just setting up your proxy and setting up your connection. I'm going to start it now. It takes some time. This device is not really brand new. OK. So here, setup is twofold. The same thing as, uh, as on the web. You have to set up the proxy, 
where Fiddler, the, the port Fiddler is going to be listening to. And then uh, one has to set up the Wi-Fi network to use this proxy. We don't have this automatic setting on, on Android yet. I've already done this so so that we don't waste time. And uh, I've configured it to use port 6969. So now we have a let's say, full fiddler again without the UI running on our Android device, capturing on port 6969. And now we can connect it to the Windows fiddler, pretty much the same way we did with uh, the Linux server. So the host is again For this 36, 36, and now we have to copy the key. Oh, <laughs> thank you again. <laughs> okay. This is how pasting works with this sharing application. So I pretty much have the full key now. And let's try connecting. Nope. Did I got the IP wrong? It it's oh, it shows connected? Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 so far, so good. So now we have uh, both the, the Android phone and uh, the Linux web server connected to our Fiddler here on Windows. And now we can just open the browser on the Android phone. and. Uh, Try browsing our, oops, yeah, we opened the browser and it still remembers the last IP. <laughs> so it did already load the, the application from the Linux web server. And we see the sessions here. Let's try. Yeah, it's the same URL, okay. Let's try refreshing it. Okay, so now we pretty much see the sessions coming from the Android device and same session being received at the web server. One can actually even run a comparison and check out whether the same thing got through. Well, we have a we have a single header changed, which is kind of normal. <laughs> but yeah, this is what uh, what Orchestra allows you to do. You can pretty much monitor traffic at origin, destination. Currently, we don't have much of the control functionality implemented, but uh, the reporting functionality is mostly there. So, <laughs> Let's go back to to our presentation. Okay, so now once you saw orchestra in action, we can talk a bit about the implementation details, what happens behind the curtains. So what happens behind the curtains is currently all the communication happens uh, over WebSocket. And all data transferred is ASGCM encrypted, and we even use uh, FIPS 140-2 certified implementation of ASGCM. Uh, technically, we could use any any full duplex protocol for communication. I mean, even our code is structured in such a way that we can easily change it, but uh, we are getting the first shot with WebSockets because, uh, let's say, it's pretty popular, and. Uh, if you run WebSockets traffic on port 80, that there is, let's say, the least chance you're going to get blocked by a firewall or security software. However, we are not running secure WebSockets because we had to somehow avoid the certificate chain key sharing infrastructure, which is intended for the web. You can't really make uh, every you can't really make every controller generate trusted certificates for all the clients. That's that's going to be really a huge overkill. So we 
pretty much implemented uh, our own encryption on top of plain web sockets. In effect, we have like uh, our own custom application layer protocol with built-in security. That's how all this currently works. Um, the technologies that make the <coughs> sorry, the technologies that make the multi-platform support possible weren't actually available till recently. So the first and most important thing that was actually available for available for quite a long time is Fiddler Core, which is pretty much the Fiddler engine in the form of a .NET library that can be used in any application. Actually, we are Tririk is uh, setting this as a separate product, so it was already there. It's just that not many people know about it. And in order to get like real multi-platform support, we had to somehow port this engine to all platforms we wanted to to run on. And uh, initially, we really played with Mono, but Mono wasn't really up to the task, as I already mentioned. So that thing became possible with the advent of uh, .NET standard. That's, let's say, the cross-section of APIs of all the new .NET framework flavors that came around, .NET Core, Xamarin. Pretty much, if, if you create a .NET standard library, it's going to run on on all the flavors that support that version of .NET standard. So that's what we did with Fiddler Core. We ported it to .NET standard. It took some rewriting, but it wasn't particularly bad. So that's what allowed us to run on on all these platforms. And uh, although we are pretty successful so far, there are still some challenges to tackle. Um, dot, we are using .NET Core and uh, Xamarin. .NET Core covers Linux and Mac, and Xamarin covers the mobile devices. .NET Core isn't really mature, though, although it's already in version 2.0. I mean, some of the APIs will throw exceptions on some platforms. They won't behave the same way on all platforms, so uh, pretty much we have to write custom platform-specific code and support all the .NET flavors specifically. But we are hoping that with time, this is going to get like less and less, and our code base is going to get, let's say, more beautiful. So speaking of which, let's get to the release plan. You are probably wondering when you're going to get your hands on on the demo you just saw. Um, Orchestra is a pretty big project, and we don't really want to, to release it waterfall, like create everything and then just dump it to the users. We'd really go after releasing it in bits and uh, taking into account the user's feedback and changing stuff, I mean, pretty much nothing is set in stone currently. Everything is subject to change. So the way it's going to go is uh, first, we're going to release Fiddler Core for .NET Standard, which, as I said, is going to allow the Fiddler engine run on all .NET platforms we want to support. It should have minimal API changes as compared to the full .NET framework version of Fiddler Core. So for the customers already using it, it should be pretty easy to run their applications there. This was actually the ultimate test of whether Orchestra would be possible or not. I mean, before this thing worked out, we weren't really sure this project was feasible. Once we had it done, we knew we could actually do Fiddler Orchestra. Then the second big step is what you just saw. I call this headless multi-platform orchestra clients. I call the clients headless because they don't have the fully fledged uh, Fiddler UI. You pretty much can't use them as Fiddler. You just can set them up as proxies and uh, have them connect to full Fiddler UI and report data there. For that, we are using ASP.NET Core on Mac and Linux. Actually, you can run this on Windows should you need to. And we use Xamarin for iOS and Android. Um, 
actually fulfill their capabilities are available programmatically in these versions, should one need them. But you still need good old Windows Fiddler to, to actually get the fully fleshed UI and do stuff with your debugging data. So it's kind of like early go-to-market approach. We, we really want to get this out and see how people are going to use it, what they're going to need. Are we moving in the right direction? Um, last step, and it's a pretty big step, is going to be full web UI for the headless clients you just saw, which this is going to actually end up with a full-blown fiddler in the browser. And then any fiddler in the browser could be orchestra controller too. We're going to implement Fiddler Orchestra in that Fiddler too. So there are a lot of challenges at this point, so you might even have to split it up further in, in smaller steps. Um, Fiddler script needs to somehow be extended to run on, on these multiple machines. Uh, some kind of priority architecture has to be introduced. Machine time needs to be somehow synced and uh, there are really a lot of challenges, so we might actually split this in, in a number of, of steps. So where we stand now, Fiddler Core for .NET Standard, which is the first step, has been live for a couple of months now. You can down, download like a trial at the Telerik website. The headless multi-platform Fiddler and Fiddler Orchestra for Windows, the demo you just saw, this is going to get live early next week or late this week. We are pretty close to getting a stable beta of this. It's not going to be production quality, but it's going to be a stable beta. It could get a lot of stuff done. And then Web UI is somewhere in the future. It's the next major step, but we are not really, we don't really have a detailed plan of, as of when this is going to happen. So, Last but not least, what happens to a good old Windows Fiddler that everybody's been using for more than a decade and it's still around and up and running? We'll definitely maintain it at least until we have stable and fully fleshed web UI. It's quite possible that we are going to keep on maintaining it after that too. But as I said, not indefinitely because it's kind of restricting us in terms of uh, technology choice and stuff we can do in that architecture. So while it's, while it's supported, it's going to be first class orchestra participant, it's going to provide all orchestra features. We'll get new features in there depending on the available APIs in the .NET framework used, but uh, like the really new stuff is probably at some point going to get just to the web UI. You can, as users, you can actually help us in the process by switching on the in-app analytics so that we can know how you guys are using it, what features you need. This is really anonymous. I mean, we're just aggregating statistical data, so we are not following you. <laughs> Big Brother is not watching. And um, yeah, I mean, we have reached the limits of the standalone WinForms app, so it has to be reborn into something else, bigger and more beautiful, and hopefully much more useful. So that was more or less it for me on the future of Fiddler. If you wonder why I talked about Telerik all the time, this is because actually Telerik acquired Fiddler, but after that progress acquired Telerik. So it's all about progress now. <laughs> and this is what the last slide is about. That was it, guys. Thank you very much.